Hi, I'm Mike, technician for Fat Bear Scooter. Today we're going to assemble the Fat Bear City. Let's get started. Let's begin by attaching the handlebars to the stem. Align the holes and fasten them together using the screw provided. Tighten using an 8mm Allen. We'll now install the controller. Use a single screw and nut to fasten the controller to the frame. This is a view of the fully assembled compartment. As you can see, it is very dense and the controller must be installed as shown. Mount the controller flush with the frame and the fastener will go in the lower left hand corner. Tighten the controller nut with a 10 mm socket. Use double sided tape to fasten the speaker to the frame. The speaker is connected with two sockets. The first is white with a red and black wire. Connect this to the controller's red socket, two pins, black and white wire. The second socket is white with a blue, orange, and brown wire. Connect this to the controller's socket, which is red and only has a red and green wire. We will now wire the horn. Connect the white wire to the terminal closest to the mounting screw. Then connect the red wire. The horn gets mounted with a screw and nut. Use a 10 mm socket to tighten the nut. Use a screw and nut to fasten the headlight to the mounting bracket on the handlebars. The headlight mounts underneath the bracket. Use a 10 mm socket to tighten the nut. Feed the headlight harness through the hole in the frame. The harness has a white socket with a black and red wire. Plug this into the controller socket, which is red, with a brown and red wire. We're now going to install the heads-up display. Use these studs to attach to the bracket. Fasten it with two nuts. Use a 10 mm socket to tighten the nut. Feed the heads up display harness through the hole in the frame. This harness plugs into the controller through a green socket. The socket has red, blue, green, brown, black, and gray wires. Next, we'll install the right blinker. It has a green and orange wire. Feed these wires through the bracket as shown. Next, feed the wires through the nut. Pay attention to the orientation of the nut, as the flat side with the neural pattern should be up against the bracket when tightened. Use a 14 mm wrench to tighten the nut. The left turn signal has a blue and green wire. Install it on the bracket as shown. Feed the wires through the nut and pay attention to the orientation of the nut. You want the flat side with the knurled pattern up against the bracket when complete. Again, use a 14 mm wrench to tighten the nut. Apply a short piece of loom to the right and left blinker wires. 
To get started, hook each wire individually to the top of the loom. You can now spin the loom to feed the wires through. Make sure the wires don't pop out at the top. Feed the blinker wires through the hole in the frame. The green wires in the blinker harness will both go to ground. There is a single blue and a single green wire coming from the controller. They are pushed to connect and it doesn't matter which wire goes where. The orange and blue wires from the blinker harness are your power wires. They will connect to the controller through a single red wire that has a dual connector at the top. Push to connect the orange and blue wires. The location of these wires in the connector do not matter. Coil up the extra wire and zip tie it together. There's not a lot of room in this compartment so you really need to be clean with your install. Use some snips to cut off the end of the zip tie. We can now prepare the front tire for installation. Let's begin by attaching the front brake rotor with six screws. Use an H3 Allen to tighten the screws. There are two spacers that the axle will slip through, a shorter one and a taller one. The smaller spacer goes on the disc brake side, the taller one will go on the opposite. Before installing the tire, roll the forks outward slightly. This will make installing the wheel easier. Notice the disc brake is on the left side of the scooter. When you have the hole in the tire aligned with the holes in the forks, feed the axle shaft through. Fasten everything together with a nut. Use an adjustable wrench to keep the axle from spinning and use a socket to tighten the nut. Next we can get the rear wheel ready for installation. We'll begin by installing the rear wheel brake rotor. Fasten it to the hub with six screws. Again, use an H3 Allen to tighten the screws. Orient the tire so that the main power lead is on the right side of the scooter. The tire is fixed in place with two screws, one on each side of the wheel. The rear wheel has a built-in motor that makes it much heavier than the front. If you don't think you can support its weight, shim it up with some wood. Use an H10 Allen to tighten the screws. Torque the rear wheel to 25 Newton meters. With the rear wheel now installed, secure the orange motor lead with zip ties as shown. Feed the motor lead through the frame as shown. B 
Be sure to route the harness underneath the frame's crossbar as shown. Plug the motor lead into the controller. The controller's socket is white and has yellow, pink, black, blue, and green wires. We will land the remaining wires in this terminal block. Match the three remaining motor wires. Blue to blue, green to green, and yellow to yellow. Lock them back in place with the nut. Use an 8mm socket to tighten the nuts. Make sure the nuts are snug, but do not over torque them. We can now install the battery cable. Pass the cable underneath the crossbeam and land the leads on the terminal block. Red goes to red and black goes to black. Be sure to not over torque the nuts. Replace the terminal block cover. It will just snap into place. Next we'll install the brakes. We'll start with the right brake. Slide the brake lever onto the handlebar. When located, tighten the two screws evenly to clamp the lever in place. Use an 8mm socket. Follow the same steps for the left brake lever. The left brake will be installed on the rear tire. Built into the frame are little clamps to grab the brake line. We're going to seat the line in each of these clamps. To install the caliper, fit the disc brake rotor between the brake pads on the caliper and lock it in place with two screws. Torque the screws to 22.5 newton meters. Tighten with a 10 millimeter socket. Zip tie the brake line in the location shown. Next we're going to take the electrical connection from the left brake lever and pass it through the front of the frame. This is going to plug into the controller, into a white socket with a white and black wire. Next, we'll take the electrical connection for the right brake lever and pass it through the front of the frame. Bring the electrical connection around the front of the bike and down the left side before passing it through the frame. We want to keep all wires and cables down the left side of the bike so that we can loom them all together at the end. This connection plugs into the controller through a white socket with a white and black wire. We're now going to install the right side brake caliper. Again, you're going to want to pass the brake line around the front of the bike and down the left side of the frame before fastening it to the fork. We'll use two screws to fasten the caliper to the bike in the locations shown. We're now going to install the blinker and horn module. 
Notice the screw on the underside. We will use this to fasten the module to the handlebar once we slide it on. Snug it up with an H3 Allen. Be careful not to over tighten. We can now pass the electrical connection through the front of the frame. We need to plug two cables into the controller. The first has a white socket with red and black wire. The second harness plugs into a white socket with a green, blue, yellow, brown, black, and white wire. The hand grip just slides on, but it does take a little bit of twisting and force. Next, we'll install the throttle. Notice the screw on the underside. We'll tighten this to lock it onto the handlebar once we slide it on. Snug it up with an H3 Allen. Again, we want to wrap this line around the front of the bike before passing it through the frame. At this point, there's a lot of lines passing through the frame. Take your time, don't force the connections, they're plastic, you don't want to risk breaking them. This harness will plug into the controller through a white socket with brown, orange, white, blue, purple, and three black wires. The mirrors will attach to the handlebars. To start, make sure the jam nut is threaded all the way up. Spin on the mirror. When the mirror finally bottoms out, spin it back the other way and sit on the bike. Turn it until you have good visibility, then lock the jam nut in place to hold its location. Use a 14mm wrench on the nut. Once the jam nut is snug, you can slide down the cover. Repeat this procedure on the right side. For this next section of assembly, we're going to need to understand how cotter pins work. Don't do this until the peg is on the bike. Pass the cotter pin through the hole in the peg and split the legs back around the peg. When you actually install the peg and split the legs of the pin, there's no way for the peg to fall out. We can now install the foot rests. Line up the geometry as shown and we'll lock it in place with the peg and cotter pin. So now that the peg is through the foot rest, I'm locking it in place with the cotter pin. Repeat these steps for all four foot rests. We'll now install the rear fender, 
but we're going to do a little prep work first. The tail light harness is held to the fender with hot glue. I'd recommend getting rid of the hot glue and using zip ties with zip tie bases. I would recommend attaching four bases evenly spaced. I only had two bases for this assembly, but you get the point. We can now install the fender on the bike. The fender is attached with two screws per side. Use a number 5 Allen to tighten the screws. And now for the opposite side. Now we'll run the taillight harness through the back of the frame. Pass the harness under the crossbar and the front of the frame. The taillight harness will connect to the controller through a red socket with green, orange, red, blue, black, and brown wires. We're now going to wrap the three cables coming down from the right handlebars. This will be done using the shorter of the two wire looms. Work each cable into the loom separately. These wires are the speed limiter. When plugged together, the scooter will run slower. When unplugged, it will run faster. We're going to run these wires through the front of the frame to make them accessible. Next, we're gonna wrap all of these wires together with the main loom. If you're reusing the loom, you'll notice one end is thicker than the other. Start with the thinner end closest to the handlebars. Again, you'll want to start with one wire at a time, feeding it through the top, and then just wrap everything together. Around this point, you will want to start wrapping the speed limiter wire and the loom from the right handlebars. At this point, you can stop wrapping the brake lines. Continue wrapping outside until you have enough slack to feed it through the frame. Now just finish it off. We can now install the front fender. Make sure the Fat Bear logo is facing out. Locate the screw holes as shown.
There are two screws and nuts for each side of the fender. There's not a lot of room to get your hand between the fender and the tire, so I line up the nut first, looking through the hole in the front, and then feed the screw through. I'm using a number 5 Allen to tighten the screw. The driver's seat and passenger seat are the same. They both attach with three studs and three nuts. Use a 10 mm socket for all of the seat's nuts. Follow the same process for the driver's seat. The backrest is also three studs and three nuts. Before we close things up, let's zip tie the brake lines to the frame. We'll now put the cover on the front compartment. Make sure all the wires are nice and neat and tucked in. The front compartment cover is held on with three screws. Use a number five Allen to tighten the screws. We can now install the battery. The battery attaches with Velcro. At this point we can also plug in the power supply line. We can now attach the rear cover. It attaches with four screws and two nuts. Two screws and nuts on the top, and two screws will thread into the frame on the bottom. To install the middle section of the floorboard, slide the tang into the groove in front first, then set the back down and lock it with the key. To charge the battery, unlock and remove the middle section of the floorboard. Remove the main power line from the battery. Plug the lead from the charger into the battery. Now plug the charger into an outlet. To change the battery in the key fob, use a small screwdriver to pop the silver side off of the fob. Take your time and don't be too rough because everything is plastic. Now remove the other side. I'm twisting the screwdriver slightly and working it down the seam.
At this point I'm just using the screwdriver to pop the battery out. Now you can just put it back together. To change or fill the brake fluid, you're going to need dot four. You need flexible quarter inch ID tubing and submerge it in some of the brake fluid in a small container. Remove the cover off of the brake bleed and just break it loose with an eight millimeter socket or wrench. Push the flexible tube line over the bleed fitting. I'm going to wrap the master cylinder with some paper towel just in case when we open it up some oil spills. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two screws. I'm going to use a flat-headed screwdriver to pop the cover off. Make sure no contaminants make their way in at this point. To bleed air from the brakes or change the fluid, loosen the bleed fitting approximately a quarter turn, then squeeze the brake lever for the brake that you're working on. Once you squeeze the lever, do not let go. Tighten the bleed fitting, then you can release the brake lever. This will prevent air bubbles and contaminated oil from cycling back into the system. Once you let go of the brake lever, you can loosen the bleed fitting and squeeze the brake again and continue this process of opening and closing the bleed fitting and squeezing the brake until all of the air bubbles are gone from the system or the fluid starts to look clean. It's critical to pay attention to the oil level in the master cylinder. If you allow it to go below the bottom of the cylinder, you'll pull air into the system. So after a few pumps of the brakes, top off the cylinder. Once you've removed all the air or cycled out all the old fluid, you can fill the reservoir and reinstall the lid with the rubber gasket. Fasten the lid with two screws. At this point, the bleed valve should be closed, but before we remove the bleed line, I'm going to put down a drip tray to catch the brake fluid in the bleed line, and I will also put on some gloves. Make sure to clean up all residual brake fluid. You don't want any to hit the brake pads or any of the paint on the scooter. Replace the bleed valve cover.